So I'm gonna invite uh, the brothers Benjamin and Marta, uh, the brother Joaquin, and the sister Isabella. <coughs> and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem. Verse 27. The presentation of a kid. It's a really important act. Because the father here they are given a testimony inside of the church and they need totally the blessing of the Lord they are presenting uh, Joachim to the, to the Lord they are letting the, the needs and they are giving the parents so that the Lord gave it to them and first they they're letting their son to know the Lord of the Lords and that's a responsibility that they have to take to take him to church to bring them to the service so they could have an experience with the Lord for them to know how good it is to serve our God and we as church we need to help with prayers giving good examples praying for them and helping in whatever they need as a church brothers in Christ and now they're adding Amen Let's pray for Joaquin. Let's close our eyes. <coughs> oh Lord, Father, we pray for the power that is the life of Jesus Christ. We ask, O Lord, in your name, for the life of Joachim, as a victory given to this family, Lord, for the cares, for all the prayers that was answered, and for everything you have done for him so far and for the family. We ask, O Lord, that you could at this time Put your hands on top of Joachim. Oh Lord, we put him in your altar so you could go and take care of him. So you can send your angels to stay with him every instant. The Lord, the Father, could have the authority from the Lord to always be speaking about you, all your power and your glory. And we think your name because so far you have been blessed this family we put the oh Lord in our altar who asked the oh Lord that he could be blessed with all your glory so he could have remarkable experiences with the Lord that he could know your voice that he could O oh Lord have the salvation so he could choose to serve you, Lord. This is the prayer we do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Oh, this is one of mine. Amen. The brothers may be seated. Let's sing a song.
glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. You wanna plead everyone, the kids, with the peace of the Lord. This word of the Lord for tonight it is in the second Luke. The book of second Luke. Of verse 15. Luke 15. Luke chapter 15. It's a really well-known text. <coughs> and it says the word of the Lord. Luke chapter 15, uh, verse 1. Then all the tax, all the tax collectors and the sinners, Drew near him, and the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives, receives sins and eats with them. So he spoke to the parable to them, saying, Oh, I'm gonna say something. What did Jesus um, he propose? The problem. Why? Why did he? Oh, you didn't understand the question. So uh, they were talking to the Republicans, the sinners, and then they said, "Oh, he eats with the sinners and Republicans." And why would Jesus propose the problem? And the answer. And do they have the answer? Yes. He proposed the parable because he heard, because he heard the sinners, and because he, because he heard the collectors um, saying bad things, and he proposed a parable saying, he proposed the parable to who? For the frazos and the tax collectors. What was the parable? One man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he was found, it, he lays him on his shoulders. Uh, I feel I feel translation say, oh wonderfully, oh with happiness. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, uh, "Enjoy with me, for I found my sheep, which was lost." I say to you, that likewise will be more joy in the heavens over one sinner who repents than over 99 than a 99 just person who needs repentance amen
my brothers. Before we enter into the message, I'm gonna ask a few questions. I so if you ask the church, do you brothers want me to ask to the pastor of the church, for the deacons of the church, or for the praise group, or oh, the praise group. Usually, uh, the church say it is for the deacons. The, the deacons, they're loved. But the questions are easy. Are you a deacon? No. Oh, so, well, you're lucky. Oh, look to your left. You're going to see some. How many sheep? There were how many sheep? A hundred. See? See how easy? How many sheep? Oh, Marcos. They ran away. One, right? <coughs> how many? How many sheep stayed? Ninety-nine. What did they say? Where? No. It wasn't. Uh... Oh, see, you got it wrong. No one asked you, and you got it wrong. But do you know why we said? Do you know why you said the sheep crowd? Because there's a song. But that doesn't doesn't go with the song. But no, they didn't leave the sheep on uh, the sheep on the on the, sh the crown. No, he left the desert. It is not only my translation. No, even. Even in the translation in Indian, not Indian, in English, they say on the wild, wildness. And why did he miss the one sheep? Easy questions, you know. Why did he miss the the one sheep? Because he counted. Because he counted the sheep. The sheep were counted in the end of the day. The counts were not counted in the beginning of the day because they were already there, you know. But in the end of the day, even today in Israel is still like this. In the end of the day, they would go and count the sheep. They would go counting 96, 97, 98, 99. Oh, it's missing one. I'm gonna stop here and ask another question. I, how many class of people? How many types of people? The text shows. How, how many types? How many classes of people does this text that we just read uh, shows? Four, right? So my brothers, the, sh the Bible shows that we should uh, uh, meditate in the Bible, in the Word. That's why many people doesn't have revelations. That's why a lot of people start reading the Bible and they sleep. Because they don't meditate on the Word. So there's four kind of people right there. There's four classes. The sinners, the republicans, the, the tax collectors and the pharisees and the bible says that those sinners and republicans they will listen to the lord jesus and the tax collectors and the pharisees the scribes and the pharisees they will complain so um, now we're just here, you know, just disinvolved with the brothers, what we know. But now it starts teaching. Who, who was the Republicans and the sinners? They were those people that the, the Pharisees and the scribes, uh, the scribes, they would say that they were sinners and Republicans. The Republicans, uh, there were the Jews, they would work for the Roman Empire. 
because Israel was under the Roman Empire. So there were public workers. We have nothing again uh, public, uh, public workers. But this classification, public and it was a classification that the people didn't like a lot. It was a classification that the Pharisees and scribes would would say because they hated they hated the Republicans because they would ask for the sacks and sometimes they would add a little more for what it was right and then they would either point because they were Romans so they were considered sinners and publicans so for the Pharisees and scribes. They didn't deserve anything. For the uh, the Pharisees and scribes, they could that attitude of Jesus to seal with them, to sit and eat with them, it was horrible. They could not. He couldn't be the Messiah because the Messiah could know that those people there, they were they were bad. That they didn't deserve it. They they were not. They didn't deserve it. But they they were. They felt like they felt like they should be there. They felt they felt good, more important than any, anybody else. And then, sadly, does that spirit exists today? We have Christians that feels like sinners, but they listen to the Lord. And we have uh, Christians that feel it's important, that they feel like better than the others. Do they have more spiritual joy than the others? They feel like it. They have Christians that they criticize the most. They have the spirit of Frazos and Scribers. When the man doesn't feel like when when they doesn't feel like unworthy then they go and they give uh, and they go for the word and they give value for the word because they feel like they're unworthy and they're like oh I have 40 years of church but that doesn't matter because the having doesn't, doesn't mean anything oh I think you know I think I can get uh, I can think I think I can do better than the other you know that's the sister she shouldn't be doing that because I know you know I can do better uh, amen pastor I'm not you know saying bad things about the church you invited me to preach and the Lord revealed this message amen my brothers who doesn't like it oh well, you can go and discuss with Lord or at heaven. The sinners, the Republicans, they will listen. They had the joy of listening. The Frazos and the Scribers, they will complain. We can go back to the parable. So the Lord was talking about the parable. Like one man, one man having a hundred sheep. That man wasn't only a pastor of sheep. He was the owner. He was the pastor and owner because the sheep were says. One man having a hundred sheep. Um, if he loses one, doesn't leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which was lost until he finds it. Let's stop right here. So let's imagine, my brothers, that people that read the Bible and they can imagine the things that Jesus said. Because Jesus right there, he used the easiest way to, to express himself in the Bible. And they just discovered the last century 
that she's already used that language. For the logic, we can see that um, the gospel now is really commercial. So, what would it be easier to do? So, I have a hundred sheep. One, um, I lost one, but I still have 99. So I'm gonna build a little place for them. So I'm gonna stay overnight with them. And then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go try to find the lost one. But no, that wasn't what he did. He left the 99, the witness. And the people can ask, but he left? He left in 99? No, he didn't left. Because I can ask you, my brothers, who are the 99? And he answered the parable to who? Who was the parable to who? For the scribes and Pharisees. So the pastor, in the hardest time, in the desert, because my brothers, the, de the desert is really hot in the morning and really cold at night. And then, but it says that the pastor, he left at night. The dangerous time of the day, the coldest time in the desert. So he could go against everything in the desert. Go against the praise in the desert. He went after his sheep, and when he finds it, he says, "I found." He doesn't say, "I found the sheep." No, he says, "I found my sheep." Lord, five be the name of the Lord, because it says here in the Bible that this pastor he didn't give up. He went after the night, the cold, all the animals. All the dangers that could be out there, and he went after the sheep until he finds it. Until he could find it, he didn't give up. And I'm here praying tonight, my brothers. You are here sitting at this bench. The kids are here. And we're here. We're here because he went after you, he went after me. He went after the darkness, he went after death, he went after the enemy, and the love of Jesus never ends. The love of the Lord always finds those who are lost. The love of the Lord is not just our love. The people, of the people sometimes they get lost and they say, oh, there it goes, that one that got lost, that one. And sometimes we always. And sometimes that could happen. You can judge some people, but no. That's what. You, that's not what you should do, and that's not what that pastor did. He didn't judge. He just went after it. I have to find it. I have to find it. My brother is this pastor. He's the owner of those sheep. The owner, it's him. He's the owner. I could not miss the sheep. The pastor Renita could not miss. But I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the pastor, I'm talking about myself too. Because, because we sometimes, we are not 100% right. But, Every night he counts this year. He counts every single one. And he misses. He misses. You can you cannot really you can sometimes not miss that one. But the pastor does. And then he went. He found the sheep. What do you think he would do he could do with the sheep? Uh, sometimes me and my wife, we lost um, my son. We were in a place. He was a kid. We lost. 
And that was the affliction, and then we went after him until we found it. And then, you know, I gave him a little tap because there was because there was people close. Because if there wasn't, I would have bit him. Because we love. But that pastor, he had a rod because he was a pastor. But he didn't hit the sheep. And he didn't say, oh, sheep. You gave me a lot of trouble. I went through the desert. I got it. I went against the darkness, the cold, all the animals. I'm tired. I didn't eat. I didn't drink water just because of you. Oh, come here because you need, you need a little saps. I know it's spanking, and, but that wasn't what he did. The Bible says he got the sheep. Where did he put the sheep, Marcos? It wasn't his arms. No, he put it on his shoulders. You know how they used to put the sheep, the sheep on the the shoulder. They would put the the legs forward and the the head to the back so she could hear the beat of the heart she could be weak she could be cold she could be cold, uh, scared even dirty but at that time she was in the shoulders of the pastor it wasn't the shoulders that he he walked with the cross it was on the shoulders that he took my life. That he took my life and your life. His shoulders felt the pain of the cross. It felt the pain of the wood. How hard my sin was. If you're not, if you're not a sen senior, if you're holy, I don't know what you're doing here. You should be having what it was in his shoulders that he brought, and then he walked with the cross. And he got everything that we don't deserve it. He got with him. But the best place that he could be, it is in his shoulders. He put him in his shoulders. Joyful. Oh, sheep. You got me in trouble. But now you're in my shoulders. You're in my arms. I'm gonna carry you. Oh, what's your name? Thiago. Right, I'm gonna ask a question. Amen. Oh, your uh, amen was without faith. Why did he take the sheep? It wasn't. Where? To his house. It isn't the Bible. He took it to his house, Tiago. To his house. It is to his house that he's gonna take you. It's not to the desert anymore. To his house. Amen. To his house. Do you wanna go to his house? Do you really wanna go to his house? Are you tired of the desert? I am. I'm tired of the desert. I'm tired of the world that I am. I want to go to his house. Do you want to go to his house? It's stay on his shoulders. It's stay on his shoulders. Pastor, I don't have strength. Me neither. There are many temptations, yes. But are you in his shoulders? If you are, 
the ways, right? My brothers. I'm not gonna do this at the church of Fast Renew though because some people could have got mad. One, the day that the Lord r revealed this message in my church, Castaneda's, I did there because the Lord revealed. In the end, I stood up my hand and I asked the church, Who here are the, ch the lost sheep? Who here are the old sheep that was lost? No, it was in Castaneras. If you want to raise your hand, okay, go ahead. Who here are the old sheep that was lost? It used to be. Is. Us. Used to be. Used to be lost sheep. But the love of the church finds you. His love found you. If I had to give a title to this message, it would be the love found me. And the love didn't give up on me. The love went after me until we found it. You used to be a lost sheep. You used to be a lost sheep. So now I'm saying his shoulders because he's gonna take you to his house.
Brothers. At that night, and the church got singing at us. 90% of the church raised their hand. And then everyone started to cry because the Lord made a lot of remember when they actually met the Lord. The service there, it is um, live. And I heard that people that was listening to the service at their house, the hospital, they raised their hands too. But I can, but I can, I can finish this message without the question and the answer. What about the 99? Hmm? And then 99. What happened? Who do you who do you guys think was the 99? It is written right here. Do you wanna read the text? And I say to you, likewise, likewise, there will, there will be more joy in the heaven over the sinner who represents over 99, just a person who needed to repentance. So, who did 99 represented? The seniors and the Republicans. And the 99 was who? Oh no, that one was the seniors. And the 99 was the Pharisees and the scribes. Because they, they, they thought they were more than the others. You know? So, it was them. They didn't think they needed uh, repentance. And another thing, my brothers, if those 99 were sheep, they should have had followed the pastor. Because in Israel, it's like this. Where the pastor goes, they go after him. They know the sheep. Oh, the sheep knows my voice. They follow me. Do you know my brother? Do you want to say now? There will be happiness in the heaven. There's happiness in the heaven. For one sinner. More than 99 for all souls and scribes. More than 99 for all souls and scribes that don't need a repentance. And there were left 99. You guys understood? You understood, Pastor? You agree, Pastor? It is with all the repact that you had to agree with me, you know? The only justice was him. He was the pastor and owner. He was the only one that had the right. He's the good pastor. He's the owner of the sheep. I said, we we are not the owner of anyone here. But we, but the owner of my soul, of your soul, is Jesus. It's Him. You go until you find it. Is there any sheep here that are lost? Is there anyone lost here? Yes, there is. You can believe there is. He will go after it until he finds it. He can even forget, but he doesn't. He doesn't give up. Let's stand up right now. It was a hundred sheep, just like it is in the song.
Jesus. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. O oh Lord, we, glee, we give our glory, our gratitude, because, because one day you asked us, you heard our pain, our suffering, and you touched our soul with your love. And one day you reached us. And we thank you, because even though we know all the possibilities of doing things wrong, you still have love us. We still love our lives. And we thank you, because you were the great pastor. You were the owner of our lives. We thank you, in the name of Jesus. The wonderful love of the Lord our eternal Father, the grace and the holy, the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit could be now upon us, my brothers, in the all church, now and forever. Amen. The brothers may be seated. Uh, the pastor will give a word. Um, we are here now, here to pray for those who want remind the brothers that tomorrow at 9, we're going to be all together, our person Lucy, to spend the Lord in the presence of the Lord. Everyone already got their information, so we're not going to have service here in the morning or either, and I, we're going to be in person Lucy. Uh, praise the Lord to everyone.